Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Get in the Garage. A music podcast. For music lovers. Today, we are not in the regular studio. As you can see here, it's more like Get in the Sun Porch. This is the <laughs> this is where... Uh, actually, before we started doing video on YouTube, this is where we recorded quite a few of the episodes. Get in the edition. Get in the edition. It was very poorly built, actually. It leaks water and stuff. It's not great. At like least it's it. not get in the steam room like it is some days. Oh, yeah. Or get in the in the refrigerator because we did a couple. <laughs> remember, we did a couple when it was winter With time. and he- the heater yeah, set up. Yeah, the heater set up and stuff. Yeah, man. Um, so the reason why we're here is because our buddy Luke wah, wah, was unfortunately came down with a bad case of the vid. COVID-19. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I call it vid. Uh, so Luke has COVID and we wish him well. As he said, we he, hope... he's sequestered in the basement. Yes, yes. So he's... He Curled is... up like a cat on a pile of records. Yeah, according to him, he's finally start Today, he said, I talked to him today. Today, he said that he's uh, starting to feel a little bit better, but that his nose feels like a faucet. But uh, he didn't lose okay. he didn't lose taste or smell or anything like yeah. that. So that's good. He didn't lose any taste. He's still listening to those Argent <laughs> records. <laughs> no, what is he listening to? He calls me the other day and he's like, hey, man, can you be that guy for me? And I'm like, what do you need? He's like, can I get that Barry White record with the rainbow on it? And I'm like, I think I have that somewhere. He's like, and then can I also have David Crosby's first album? And I'm like, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you listening to Barry White and David Crosby together? What the hell is going on down there? You must be sick. <laughs> uh but yeah, so we wish him well, and we yeah. we uh, we hope he's doing all right, and and he's feeling better. And uh, leave some leave some f- some get well comments uh, down below too, um, so Luca can, yes. can get some warm wishes of of a speedy recovery. Now, uh, shall we start our? Oh, I don't have the song queued up because it's amateur hour, <laughs> so not that we can hear it anyway. But um, let's, let's hit see. it. Yeah, the yeah. theme song. Yes. All right. We can't. <laughs> We're not wearing headphones, so we can't. That's okay. I feel it in my soul. Nice plants, by the way. Yeah, that was a gift from my mother, actually. Mm. Shout out to Georgia. Mm. All right, there we go. So now we're here finally we got yeah we got some good we got the we got the grandmother begonia over here yeah that thing is monstrous we got the other begonia yeah this one it's it's doing well also yeah anybody who lives locally if you're looking for a an angel, an angel wing begonia i uh i root them in glasses and uh and give them to people so that's a little <laughs> side hustle <laughs> get in the get in the greenhouse <laughs> <laughs> all right so can i get can i all right can i get a? Uh, can i get some, da, some da, news da, 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 thank you da, 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 this just in snoop dog has released his own line of cereal called snoop loops oh thank you and they okay. are berry quote berry delicious faux shizzle um cannabis infused no they are not oh, they are okay. not but they do have more marshmallows but it's like jack white had so here's Jack White chiming <laughs> in on something that like who hashtag who cares about you Jack White but um so Snoop Dogg I'll I'll try to throw it in here somewhere so Snoop Dogg releases uh you know his cereal they're called Snoop Loops and on the front of it it says it says it says more marshmallows on it but it's like Jack White comments and says more marshmallows than what. Right, then previously there were zero because it didn't exist. Because it didn't exist, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Master P, uh, shout out to Rap Snacks. They're not sponsored, this podcast, yet. Um, yeah. Had released and it said more marshmallow, singular, not plural. So it's kind of interesting. But, I mean, that may have been like an early mock-up. Master P, the, the grammar police. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> more marshmallow. Um so it's pretty cool though because um, it, all uh, proceeds go to charity. So one of the charities oh, cool. is Door of Hope. It's like a homelessness charity, hmm. um, and uh, and yeah, I mean it's uh, it's it's another interesting business venture on uh, you know for Snoop Dogg. He's been you know not only does he do music, but he's involved with you know shows with Martha Stewart and you know all kinds yeah. of stuff like that too. He's on like the Comedy Central roasts and stuff now too. 
So, uh, but yeah, Snoop Loops is, uh, you know, hopefully Snoop Loops. Hopefully, it's available uh, at a store near you. They said <laughs> it was. Uh, he's conquering the cereal shelves. Oh boy! Yeah, it's very delicious for shizzle. <laughs> for uh, shizzle. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway so some other music news uh moving on so drake i don't know if you saw that drake file he got a face tattoo did you see this oh i did not drake got a face tattoo i saw that cardi b got a face tattoo oh i didn't see that cardi b got a face tattoo yeah some red word along her jawline oh okay drake yeah. got a face tattoo though he got a face tattoo i'm not sure which side he got a face tattoo on i think it was like the right but on like his cheek like upper cheek here uh, it was the letters S G. It actually stands for Sandra Gale, who is it's his mother. It's his mother's name is Sandra Gale. Um, but I couldn't help but go into the comments and uh, <laughs> just read what people thought that S G stood for. And I just have like a small list of things that people thought S G stood for. And I like to read these to you now. Um, sausage gravy, delicious. No. Silly goose. No. No. Some guy. Super goop. Sniper Gang, Sausage Grease, and Soggy Granola. So none of those are right. It's Sandra Gale. But, uh, you know, shout out to uh, Drake. Sugar Turner. Glider. Sugar Glider. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, Flying Squirrels? Yeah, yeah. I like I liked, I liked Silly Goose. I thought that was kind of fun and funny. Silly Goose. If it was Silly Goose, though, he would have gotten a small goose with, like, big clown shoes on. yeah. That would have maybe he'll get that. that. Would have done it. Yeah, he would have done it. Anyway, so there you go, Drake. Um, moving on. <laughs> no new friends, as Drake says. Uh, oh, did you hear? Um, Mariah Carey trademarked herself as being the queen of Christmas. I did not. Yeah. So this is a thing now, and people are like freaking out about it. What what does that mean? Tra trademark the phrase "the Queen of Christmas." I guess so. Yeah, that's what I had heard. Um, I forget. Somebody had posted a thing. Uh, she, but yeah, she's she's the Queen of Christmas now. And like you know, I mean, I don't know how well it's gonna. I I suppose that would really depend on how the lawsuit turns out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, she has one big Christmas song. Yeah. Which is from an album of Christmas songs, but yeah. like. Nobody knows any of the other versions of Christmas songs. No, I mean all I want for Christmas one. is you is like the only one. Yeah, but she has dubbed, she's officially dubbed herself as the Queen of Christmas. I would say she does not have a claim to the throne. No. Who would you say is the queen? Is there a Queen of Christmas? I mean, we have okay. Let's th there's there are. I mean, there's Kings of Christmas, of course. I mean, the three kings, not to, you know, <laughs> the, the, literal, the, the literal three kings the of Christmas. The baby in the, the manger. Ba the baby, Jesus, of course, um, is the king of Christmas. Musical queen of Christmas. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, who has, like, the classic? I mean, she's probably got the only classic. Brenda Lee is the only other female vocalist that has a... She did Rock Around the Christmas Tree. Oh, yeah, tree. yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much... I mean, yeah. Let us know what you think. Who is the Who is the queen of Christmas? Who are the kings, though? I mean, you get the... Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's the guy. He's the guy. There's yeah, nobody. because everybody else did Christmas songs. Oh, it's Bing Crosby or Andy Williams, in my opinion. Yeah. But if I'm picking one, it's Bing Crosby. Yeah, Bing's the man. He started in a Christmas... King Bing. He started, as he's known. Yeah, as he's known, <laughs> across the land. Across the land, Jerusalem. He starred in White Christmas and... Has lots of Christmas classics. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mariah I can't Carey. think. I mean, I get. I mean, all I want for Christmas, like that song, is probably. Uh, I mean, it like like maybe like a modern, a more modern day Christmas song. That's kind of the one, right? I mean, who's got a yeah. more modern Christmas song that's like bigger than that? You know what I'm saying? No, that is the one. I I, I was thinking before her song got big. Maybe the biggest one before that, that would have been like a Queen of Christmas, was um, Darlene Love. Okay. What was her her song? Uh, uh, Baby, please come home. Uh, maybe. she sang it every year on like the Letterman late night show, and okay, it it was a uh, who's the murderer guy who did producing? Oh, Jay Simpson? oh, 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 no, Jay Simpson. 
<laughs> she didn't Phil murder Spector. anybody. Phil Spector. He didn't murder anybody. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Allegedly. Phil Spector. Phil Spector. I think Con- Phil Sp- he was the, he's a convicted, convicted. murderer. Phil Spector, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, produced that song. I think it's called Baby, Please Come Home. Yeah. And it was... Um, Christmas, the lights on around. Dun, 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 okay. dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, Mariah Carey, guess what? All I Want for Christmas sounds 85% like that song. Yeah. But. Sorry, Mariah. It's Christmas songs. They all f- they all sound the same. Yeah. So, yeah. I, interesting, though. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting indeed. So, there you go. Mariah Carey, uh, is she the queen of Christmas? I don't know. Like and comment. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> 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 oh. So, some more music news. Okay. Uh, in the world of hip hop. Okay. Are you familiar with Drew Tag- Taggart? Drew Ta- Taggart? That's his Instagram. Tag- 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 Drew Taggart? He's no. from uh, the Chainsmokers. Okay. I'm yes. familiar with them, the duo of electronic music producers. Yeah. So, uh, he, so, as the story goes, he had gone out and met T.I. at a club. T.I., okay. famous hip hop artist and rapper. Uh, and they were like hanging out and they were vibing and all that stuff. Uh, and I guess uh, Drew kissed T.I. on the cheek and T.I. punched him. <laughs> and uh, and then they made good. So not that this is anything, oh, okay. any, any that, crazy well, news, good. but uh, yeah. So, you know, was, this was just that... in T.I. punches Drew Taggart of the Chainsmokers. Oh, the punching the was cheek. recently. Yes, this had this. Oh, okay. this this story. I literally just saw about this story uh, maybe like pff, an hour and a half, two oh, hours okay. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a really funny if you look on Stereo Gum. Stereo Gum's uh, an Instagram, uh, an Instagram page and like music yeah. news outlet and stuff like that. They had posted a video of Drew talking about how he kissed Ti on the cheek and mm. Ti, Ti punched him and was like, "Just give me some space, man." And then they were cool. Yeah. And they were like, he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, man. I just kind of got lost in the vibes." And Ti was like, "No, you're cool." And then they were cool. So. Yeah, I'm not like a nightclub nightlife person, but. It's probably par for the course that like you're getting a bunch of drinks with people and you're hanging out at a club, so you are two inches away from each other anyway. Yeah. That yeah, you get overly touchy and familiar with people. It's kind of tendency maybe for some people, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I personally would be kissing a a guy I'm just hanging out with <laughs> <laughs> on the cheek. Like that's not personally what I do ever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. because like I try to respect like. <laughs> People's boundaries personal space and personal and boundaries. space and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you're feeling the vibes, I guess I don't know. But I, but you know, I mean, it's what you know. It's T. Also, I. Ti does not give off the "I'm gonna be cool with you, kissing on the cheek." Vibe. Yeah, right, right, like, right, right. He's not. He he's not laughing and giggling and slapping his knee all night. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> he's probably pretty stoic and like. Yeah. He's enjoying himself, but he's not making it very clear that he is. Kind yeah, of there's fun. no open That's, invitation to kiss yeah, T.I. No. on the cheek. No. Yeah, so um, yeah. So there you go. I don't know. I to do with that what you will. Um, also, Ed, this is probably, yeah, my last bit of music news. Um, so I don't know if you heard, but The Game, I did hear. artist, yeah. uh, kind of called out Eminem. On yep. the Black Slim Shady song, I think that's a new. I think he released the, the game released a new full length album, and this song is album. ten minutes long. Yeah, yeah, it's a whopper. And he calls out Eminem. It'll be pretty interesting to kind of see because you know. F- so I mean, our era, we're like an Eminem heavy era. You know, like he was yeah. kind of like the dude when we were in like middle school and the high school and stuff. It's just twenty years ago. It's been a while. It's been a while. So you know, you figure Slim Shady LP, Marshall Mathers LP, like that stuff had come out, and you know, and Eminem was kind of on the top of his game, uh, and no pun intended. And um, Fifty Cent had like just gotten signed to yep. uh, Aftermath with collaborations, and he had G Unit, and so he had artists like The Game and like Lloyd Banks, and amongst others, and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the game was one of the guys that he kind of like branched off from G Unit as well and had a solo record. His solo record was actually really good. I can't remember the name of the solo album. The documentary. The documentary. That's the name of it. That's the good one. Where he's, he's on like the sitting cover and, and it's a bunch of r- yeah rim, tires, like with, tires rims. with rims on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I so. think that's called the documentary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and I really I I enjoyed that album. Man. I thought that was really good and yeah. uh, and all that. But more recently, I think the game was on. I want to say he was on either the Breakfast Club or Drink Champs. He was on one of those right. It's one of those types of shows. Yeah, one of those yeah. types of shows. Yeah. 
And um, I can't really remember how it all sort of started, but I do remember sort of early rumblings of this kind of thing playing out a few mm. months ago where it was either Charlemagne or I can't remember the name of the host of Drink Chaps. Nori is Nori, the host thank of you. Drink Chaps. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Uh, where they were talking about if the game was to have a freestyle battle with Eminem, like, oh, wouldn't you be, like, kind of, not scared, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Eminem's yes. kind of the freestyle guy and all of that. Yes. And the game was kind of like, fuck that dude. I'll, you know, like, um, he doesn't scare anybody. Like, something along the lines of, like, where he asks Nori, I think, uh, you know, are you saying that Eminem's better than me? So it kind of turned right, into this right. like weird sort I, yeah, of like yeah. Wild West standoff thing. Like, are you <laughs> saying are you saying that he's better than me? Because like, yeah. hey man, like I'm on your show right now, you know. Um, so whether or not that begat yeah. this, you know, this happening, but he goes for the throat, man. He, you know, he he says quite a couple things and calls Eminem out and also sort of challenges him. So it'll be interesting, I think, to see in the future to see if Eminem kind of you know, kind of hits back. I know that Eminem had a feud with Machine Gun Kelly, maybe what, last year, or the year before, something like that. They kind of had an exchange of things. That kind of like fizzled out anyway, though. People said Eminem took him, but I didn't think Eminem really took Like, I was like, and I'm an Eminem fan, and I'm like, I don't really, I, I mean, wasn't really impressed, you know? It was a rap battle, whatever, diss tracks back and forth, and then Machine Gun Kelly like stopped making rap music. So, <laughs> so in a lot of people's view, they were like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, that says enough." Maybe I don't know. But was it that was it was Eminem's in, diss track so bad that Machine Gun Kelly was like, "I guess I'll just play emo rock now." <laughs> that's what people seem to think. Yeah, but also it goes into the large umbrella uh, umbrella of like, who cares? Hip hop beefs, like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. Like the game is is the game's issue maybe because of business dealings with being signed by Eminem's label and then after three albums being dropped or what you know it could be yeah it could there ten could years be. of animosity from that it yeah, could yeah. it could be like without he kind of said it and kind of didn't say it but anytime a black hip hop artist is told about how Eminem is so much better than them they take offense to it yeah I shouldn't say anytime but I should say a lot of times yeah. I've seen that. Because they say, well, he's a fucking white guy. He's the Elvis Presley of our genre. Of course he's big because he's white. Yeah. And I don't know, like, it's, I don't really yeah, care. Like, I know. the game's 50 years old. Eminem's 50 years old. They're making music still. They're whatever. It's all good. But who cares? Who cares? Yeah, hashtag who cares. who cares? I know. I know. I thought about that, too, where I'm like. Is this old hat? Like, should we even be talking about this? Because yeah, it's I, like, it's it's well, one of those things. You and know? I, I saw the video clip and I thought, well, you know, I, I it piqued my interest enough to watch the five minute YouTube video. I didn't listen to that 10 minute song because you know why? I haven't listened to a game song in 16 years. <laughs> why the fuck would I go and seek him out now? Game. Blouses. Blouses. <laughs> like, this is how we do. That's the last time I listened to the game, yeah, which was I know. 2004, maybe. I, like, I was still wearing Fat Farm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like. I can't remember the last time I've been to Eblins. For crying out loud. <laughs> Jesus. No, but I hear you though. I hear you. I know it's one of those things. Like it's it's you know what do you what do you what do you even do? I mean, like what well, last week we were gonna talk. We were talking about album reviews and stuff, and yeah. Eminem had like a greatest hits type thing and stuff. And we're talking about what we're gonna cover. And we're like, eh, do we talk about Eminem? And it's like, you know, Eminem was you know he listened, man. He was a big part. He was a big part of my life musically yeah. and all that. And 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 you know like early on in like seventh and eighth grade and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Like I put I. I put hydrogen peroxide through my hair at one point. <laughs> yeah. Like, listen, yeah. I'm not even going to like lie like I didn't do that. You know what yes. I mean? But you grow a little older, a little wiser. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know, you, you put down the M&M and you... And the game, too. They, they Not to say that they both didn't have their place in hip-hop history and both don't, you know, have the right to make music now. They could... You know, you want to release rap albums when you're 68 years old? I don't care. Yeah. I'm not going to probably listen to it, but... Yeah. Do your thing. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, but it's like their chapter in hip hop history of like the front of the culture was Eminem, 1999 to 2005, and the game like 2003 to 2007. Like, yeah. And it's all good. Like, you're, it's great to be the top of your, or, you know, in the mix of the top of your thing for three, four, five years. 
but what's done is done. But what? Yeah, it's like you know, game over, man. The game whatever. blouses. Anyway, all right, okay, that's that's enough. Let's move on. Okay, so out, out of music news, real quick, I just wanted to give a quick shout out before we move on because we have two album reviews that we wanted to cover this week. I wanted to give a quick shout out to. Uh, Sly and the Family Stoned, Luke and I, um, before we realized that he may or may not have had COVID. I don't know. You know, we don't know. We don't know the timing. We don't know the timing. We don't know the timing. But we do know that nobody was known to have COVID and then gone to see the show. Correct. Yes, we didn't. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we wouldn't have gone. We wouldn't have gone. Um, uh, so we went to the Strange Brew Bar and Grill. Pub. <laughs> Pub. <laughs> <laughs> strange brew pub, pub and grill thing. pub no, and grill no. pub strange and grill. brew pub in norwich connecticut uh, in norwich connecticut and we saw the band slime and the family stone again we had shouted them out um before and also shout out to james burke who played who opened for slime and the family stoned when we went to go see him at the oasis pub in new london we forgot to shout him out when we talked oh, okay. about the last line of the famous stone james burke check him out he does like electronic y sort of sample synth the good he's also guitar. new london county or uh he's also new london yes and yeah. i if i remember correctly because i got to talking to him when i saw him in norwich and i think he sits on the council for new london so that's pretty cool he's like sits on the town council so shout out to james burke and uh, so also there's a band called Acid Henge that opened up for Slam of the Family Stone. So shout out to them, too. They were a great, great opener, uh, guitar player and drum duo, psychedelic, wow. jammy, rocky goodness. They whipped out Rumble. I don't even know if anybody cool. realized that that was the song that they were playing. And, and the know. Druids. And the Druids, yeah, it was it was cool though, man. Acid Henge is like is killer, okay. and and Sline, they sounded great, especially at Strange Brew. Like the sound guy that's there is like he's really good, man. Like they was I'm it not... Jason Wallace, the owner? Uh, it might have been. He does a lot of sound. Does he do? There. Does he yeah. do a lot of the sound? Glasses, yeah, dark hair, kind of pulled back ponytail. Maybe. I think so. Yeah, because yeah, we were we were yeah. we were kind of like hanging out, great venue around. Yeah, best venue in Norwich. Yeah, man, and, and the possibly sound... possibly best venue in New London County, in my opinion. I think so, man. I think sound. I think as far as sound goes, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's fully sound, like every like the the full PA system and all that stuff. Like everything sounded really, really good. They also mm. Sly had their third guitar player for this show, mm. so that was cool because like it added just like another dimension to oh, yeah. to the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so shout out to Michael Sline and the family stoned, check them out. And then acid henge and James Burke as well. I did confirm with Ron Lynch, um, when I saw him yesterday because Ron hosted the strange brew open mic and I saw the picture of Sline and the family stoned. And I was like, I think Michael Sline is the guy who played at Ron's open mic and was playing through like six delay pedals and was playing like just droney fuzzy stuff while he read poetry over it yeah 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 and ron was like oh yeah that was him i yeah. said oh i gotta check out his full band then <laughs> like come on dude the full band the he had so many delay pedals he crazy. stopped playing and then like he had to click off like on his double pedal board like yeah. every single thing that was still running his pedal board's no joke dude i good. had a moment i had a minute to like kind of like take again on that pedal board he had the Woo! line the green line six crazy yeah i think uh what's the like her harmonics. Uh, memory man. Oh, memory man. I think he has one of those. Yeah. I think he yeah. has a boss DD seven, yeah. eight, whatever. Yeah. Great. Great. But anyway, the band cool. was great. Like same thing with acid hinged. Yeah. They were all awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So moving on, uh, shall we do, did we, I forget what we planned on. Do. Was Are we doing a do? break? Uh, no, let's no? just roll okay. it. Let's just run it. Let's just send it. Who cares? Um, whichever uh, one you want to start with. All right. Well, let's, okay. So, Two new album reviews. We'll start. Uh, both were released August twelfth um, of this month, the month of August, the year of our Lord 2020, 2020, 2022. Thank you. Um, so the first one of the two is the OCs. A uh, oh, OCs. OCs. Oh, is it OCs now? It's not the OCs. It's just O, capital O, lowercase S E E S. Oh, I think you're right. If you look at their discography, it's so confusing. On streaming, though, it'll have their album, and it like it'll be listed to like five different artists because yeah, it yeah. gets. Cause it's but it is OCs. OCs, now. formerly known as the OCs. Formerly, formerly known as, as the OCs. The OCs. The OCs. <laughs> formerly, formerly known as OCS. Oh yes, uh, and there was one before that. Yeah, whatever OCS actually stands yeah, for. Yeah, Orange County Surfers or something yeah. like that. I don't know, whatever it is. Hang 10. Um, 
So a foul form is the latest record. Uh, we're going to, uh, I think Luke is going to do, since he's like trapped in dungeon, he's yeah. going to do uh, a foul form, like full album breakdown and probably upload that to our YouTube channel. And as, Luke like, is its the, own thing. he is the OC's guy. He's the OC's OG. You could you say will. he has OCD. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a real problem. <laughs> A uh, A D H O C. Um, that was that was, they're, a, they're, that was a stretch. <laughs> so for people who don't know, they're uh, a fuzzy, psyche, freak out, garage rock, punk, some metal tinge, you know, yeah, raucous drive-in music. Very, you know, very high energy. Two drummers, yeah, keyboard, guitar, bass. Yeah, they've got a yeah. lot of cool, like, uh, all their live stuff is really cool too. Like, there's the levitation sessions. I think that was yeah. that big. S- Big Sir. Sir, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I could. I think they have a thing at Red Rocks too. But yep. uh, uh, their KEXP, that's from earlier. That's a really, really killer set too. Um, so what we get from the OCs on this album is more so something that's like lo-fi. I heard it like into kind of like the early '80s hardcore yeah. kind of vibe. Uh, in in contrast, like what they kind of seemed like what they were building up to become was sort of this like psychedelic prog freak rock kind of band right so what's interesting about this record is it kind of like goes back to the basics super super lo-fi very very meat and potatoes but also i mean fully charged i was listening to it and i was like this sounds like the ramones on meth like it's just like (laughs) you know what i'm saying like it's like it's like that it's like that it's like punk on bath salts it's just fucking freak out crazy feedbacky yeah uh, so noisy, so crazy. There's like the black flaggy kind of influence in there as well. Uh, moments I find are quite painful on this record. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's 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 moments Pur- purposely man. painful. Yeah, though. right, right, right. Like, I don't mean the it point like... of that crushing. Yeah, it's very very stuff. much intentional. It's ten songs. I think the album's less than twenty two minutes long. Yeah, it's twenty one minutes and fifty eight seconds. Yeah. yeah, and it's like. I think three of the ten songs are three to three and a half minutes long, and then the other seven songs are between like a minute and ten seconds and a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah, super short. So it's very much like how Black Flag and other Minor Threat right. and yeah. Fugazi and the bands from the early '80s. Yeah, short, kick it in your throat, and then go to the next song. Yeah. So Funeral Solution was the uh, single that was dropped that had an accompanying video. I think Luke and I did talk about that mm. at one point. I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago. Well, when it came out, it would have been. Um, but uh, th- this has got like all kinds of funny like song titles in it too. There's, I mean, I say funny, but it's really not funny. Like, <laughs> yeah. too late for suicide is one. Like, um, yeah, funeral solution. Uh, the song sacrifice. That's the album closer. That was. Uh, that's a cover from a band called Rudimentary Penny, I think is the name of the band. I Forgive me, I didn't do much research mm. on that. We don't have Luke, a resident, you know, OCD or yeah. but um <laughs> one cover but, though, yeah, to close the album. Yeah. Uh and uh, the front man's name is John Dwyer, I believe. I think yep. he produced, mixed, engineered this whole thing in a basement studio mm-hmm. on very minimal old retro um, purposely grind, grimy and like yeah. crappy sounding gear. But I say crappy sounding, it's still cool sounding record though. Yeah. It doesn't sound like they didn't intend it to sound this way. Right. It's just that like the shit that's fuzzy or spiked or like harsh is purposely to yeah. be that way. And the vocals, like the vocals, if you've ever seen any live videos, like he sings like a man possessed. He like will put the microphone down his throat yeah. and like, or like press his like tongue up yeah. against. Yeah, like this so. is a this is a punk band in the truest sense of like you see them on stage and you know these dudes have not showered in five days. Yeah, they look like they smell kind of crusty. <laughs> yeah. You know, they look Which like they look good. like how you think Luke smells. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love Luke. I love Luke. He's quite oniony though on his bad days. <laughs> No, but I feel you. Yeah, and it's that whole thing, though. It's 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 a vibe, and it's its own its yeah. own kind of thing. And um, I I do, man. I love this band. Those levitation sessions are great. All the you know all the early stuff. Uh, the albums like Goblin and um, oh crap. Now that I'm Orc. on this one. Orc, thank you. Smote, or no, Smote Reverser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the two that I really like. Yeah. What's the one? Those are from the, like 2016. What's the 2017? one with like the strawberries and like the the dog teeth and eyes what the hell's the name of it i can't remember i think it's got that song face stabber on it 
Anyway. I think that's the name of an album is Face Stabber. Oh, maybe it's Face Stabber then, yeah. yeah. See, where's Luke when we need him? Well, he has got COVID. I, I think Face Stabber no. has like a tr- like a barbaric troll on the cover. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. He's blue. He looks like a genie he from looks hell. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> genie from hell. Know. Maybe. He's not granting any wishes. Um, He's just but, crushing skulls. Yeah, but so this is a band they put out pretty much like an album a year. Yeah. If not some i think some years they've done two and maybe they skip a year every now and then but um like you said a very somewhat of a left turn from how they were kind of getting the more spacey droney yeah um like that german kind of punk driving like um they say kraut rock but that's not very pc yeah um Cosmiche is what they prefer it to be called. Cosmiche. Cosmiche. Cosmic music. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> things like like uh, Noi and craft uh, work and stuff like that. They were getting yeah. more into that droniness, that yeah, yeah. double drums, but the drums are both exactly doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet this is like, I was not expecting this at all. I When you said, or Luke, or whoever suggests that we listen to this, I was like... Because sometimes this the six minute metal drum, yeah, you know, yeah. get the little exhausting for me. And then I put on this album like, you know, this thing's done before I even have a chance to pay attention. Yeah. The, it, well, to but, be fair, yeah. and and also in Jeff's defense, like the the album that came out before this, it was called Meta what Metamorphosed or Metamorphosed or something like that. Uh, that record was like I think I think close to an hour long and like five songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you had songs on there that were like fourteen minutes long. 20. So it's, you know, it's an understandable sort of like uh, going into it because it's not for the faint of heart. Like it, it yeah. challenges the palate, man. It's, you know, but it's cool because, you know, they're they're a band that kind of is always like changing and, and, and doing different stuff, even though they always kind of sound like themselves. Yes. Um, but this record, yeah, this record, I was complete. Yeah. Out of the blue for me, too, man. I did not yeah. anticipate that there was going to be like this. Did you have any sort favorite songs that you particularly um, noted? I, I wrote down a couple that I enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, I like Funeral Solution. That that was the single. I thought that was really cool. And the accompanying music video to that was, like, pretty dope. Um, I do like Too Late for Suicide. Me too. Um, there's, like, that... Yeah, yeah. Like, the siren sort of thing yeah. that he does with the guitars. And, like, these kind of, like, stabby sort of, yeah. like... It reminded me of what Idols is doing in a lot of their music. I don't oh, okay. If you listen to them, but they're yeah. worth checking out as well. I like the title track. Yeah. Foul form. Yeah. I liked the song Fucking Kill Me. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, that was a good song too. I just like the, you know, yeah. the musical palette, like what they were going for. Yeah. Um, like most of these reviews, I, it takes me two weeks to even dig into lyrical content and all that. Yeah. But the vocal delivery and the music and like the tones and instrumentation, I really enjoyed. Yeah. 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 And if it's cool. too brutal for you, skip that song. And maybe the next minute and a half song will catch you. And yeah. if and if it's too much for you overall, it's like, all right, well, it's twenty two minutes. Yeah, I think the only song that I it's like, I think it was called "A Bird and Snared." That's uh, I can't read my own handwriting. I record on my phone, so I a have to bird write notes. and snared. A bird and snared. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I that was the only song where I was like, oh, this is just hot noise. Yeah. Like I tr- I, li- I tried listening to that and I was like kind of like just pop on around doing the dishes You're and right. stuff and I'm like wait a minute what the hell's going on? Like right. I thought something ma- I was like is my speaker blown or something? It was really really far out. It was cool. But once once you yeah. see that oh this is intentional, that's right. where you're like okay, I see you. I see you. But it's cool yeah. because it's not like it's not this crazy long track with no. all hot noise. It's no. like a minute and 15 seconds. So right. it's it's he gives you the noise but it's not you know, you're not it's not sustained. Horse. It's yeah. not exhausting. It's yeah, yeah. short bursts. Um, so can we give it a rating real quick? Do you want to try to give it throw a rating out? I mean, uh, Pitchfork uh, gave it a seven. Seven half. Seven, seven point half. five. I'll feel. I'll, yeah, I'll bet you there. Seven. I'll do seven eight. I'll go. Oh my I'll go God. full Pitchfork. <laughs> no, I. Yeah, it's uh, for me. I I personally like the long drawn out jammy thing that me the too. OCs were more. going for. Mm-hmm. That was much more my speed. So mm-hmm. this was a bit jarring for me. You know, seven eight. Um, so if this ahead. album was even like seven minutes longer, it would have been much, I would have enjoyed it much less. Hmm. But the right. fact that I knew it's going to pummel you in a certain zone for a minute and a half, I enjoyed that. Yeah, right, right. It's when you're like, 
all right, it's been two minutes already. When it's when's the song over? You look at your phone and you go, oh my god, there's 45 seconds left in the yeah. song. That can get a little bit much. So this was right. this was good. Right on. So there you have it. What do you guys think? Uh, what does Luke think? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Stick around. To what do to, we What do we guess Luke hear. thinks for a rating? Let's Let's jump to the end. Uh, he loves his band. So does that mean? He loves. He band. loves this style of punk shit. Too. Yeah, that's what I mean. He loves he's, those he's a, minute he's, half songs. He's a, he's a crusty fellow. This is so a, nine. I don't know. This is a yeah. nine. He's saying nine. You you say he's gonna give it a nine? He loves like this is a band for him that he won't give less than an eight. Yeah, maybe. out of like how much he loves his band, which I give? understand. There are bands like that. I feel that way too. What did he give Journey? <laughs> Between six and a half, maybe six and a half. I don't know. <laughs> just out of curiosity anyway we'll have to look back uh we do need to move on but yeah i don't know maybe uh i'll say like yeah i'm saying he's i'm saying he loves this band and he loves homages to minute and a half long hardcore yeah, early he's, days punk he's a black flag guy he loves, he's a misfits guy he's a does this sound like it was recorded on a 50 dollars piece of shit record he loves yeah, cassette his... cassette fidelity stuff yeah that's true yeah, all right. I'm saying he's gonna. You'll he's project gonna nine. Do, I'll project eight point yeah. five. I'll say eight point five. Also, he's we'll see what he's he probably been, he's he got this a week early because he's like part of the yeah. fan club or whatever. Yeah, he's probably been playing this. I repeat, in his in his sick oh, den his of, sick of and... basement. <laughs> 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 he just got COVID brain, just <laughs> losing his mind listening to this. Just fucking kill me all these songs. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. So there you have it. Let us know what you think. Um, Okay. So the last and final release, Jeffrey, would you like to tell us what we're going to cover? Because this was actually. Yes. So we're looking to see what we're going to cover. And this album stood out to Jeff. And uh, I'm glad that he chose it. Sure. I really enjoyed it. This album is a project, a collaboration between the producer Danger Mouse and uh, also known as Brian Burton and the MC Black Thought. Tariq Thompson might be his name from the Roots. Yep, yep. Um, they are both very experienced musicians, especially in the world of hip hop. Um, Danger Mouse broke as a producer when he made his mashup of Jay Z's Black album with the Beatles' White album called mm-hmm. The Gray Album. It was released like illegally and all that shit in the early 2000s, maybe 2003 or four. Um, and Black Thought has been with the Roots since. I mean, I think their first album might have been like 92, 93, mm. like a long time ago. Yeah. And for people who don't know, The Roots is the house band of the Jimmy Fallon experience. Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon the late Tonight, Tonight show, show, Tonight Show band. Um, so he's a very versatile MC and, and performer. And uh, this is uh, an album that I really enjoyed. Really, yeah. really enjoyed. Yeah, it's a good re- it's yeah. a good record, man. And it's yeah. it's super approachable too. It's twelve songs. Uh I said Thompson. It's Trotter. Trotter. I didn't look it up, but I know it's Trotter. Is it? Yes. Tariq Trotter. Tariq Trotter. What an idiot. Yeah, I blew you, it. You're fired. <laughs> um so yeah, twelve songs, thirty eight minutes long. I mean, this was this you let me tell you what I like about this record. This record to me made me feel like kind of like it was sort of a tipping of the hat back to the old school way that hip hop is was made where it's kind mm-hmm. of like the producer dj mm-hmm. with the mc mm-hmm. like it's that format it's formulaic in that way it felt old school to me uh the samples were killer on this mm-hmm. record there were some really really cool samples a lot of heavy stuff from like the 70s like there's a vanilla mm-hmm. fudge sample in one of those songs there's another one uh kiki d i don't know if you're familiar with kiki d but she was i am she's saying with ellen john don't go breaking my heart oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah duh um so the darkest part that that song uh featuring uh raekwon and who was a kid sister that mm-hmm. was a kiki d sample um let me think here uh the no gold teeth uh <laughs> like yeah. that thing yep. that's a song called stop by uh hugh mas uh Masakela? it's okay. uh it's a pretty killer sample we uh luke and i had looked it up months and months and months ago because i forget I don't know if that song was how already released and just thrown on this record, but anyway, the point is, is that uh, yeah, I respect it. I dig it, man. I think Danger Mouse is cool. Danger Mouse had produced, I think, uh, what's that Black Keys record? Turn blue with Fever and Turn blue. Was that the one that Danger Mouse produced? Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So he uh, might have produced a couple of theirs. Yeah. Because I thought he, I don't know. He's worked with a bunch of people in the past decade. Yeah. He's he did he produced a Beck record. He's made a couple yeah. records with the guy from the Shins under the like collaboration name uh, Broken Bells. Mm-hmm. He's been a producer on one or two Gorillas albums. Oh, okay. He did the Gnarls Barkley project with yep. CeeLo Green. So he's like, hasn't been full hip hop, hip hop producing for a while, but he's always been in the world of like his, his instruments always have hip hop, hip hop flavor. Yeah. yeah. And they're always like the dusty record crate type of samples. Yeah. He leaves things where they sound like put through an old sampler. It's not all cleaned up and digitized and sparkly. Like I, I describe his, his instrumentals sound like like the memories of hip hop mm. cuz it's like it's kind of it has that haunting quality of like you can hear the space in things but he's not like purposely like adding more reverb or weirdness or crackliness it just sounds like very authentic like you said that old school style of hip hop and by old school I, we are thinking of like especially early 90s yeah right 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 um, like dj premier with like right. mob deep or and even pete, like, pete you know. rock and yeah. um those type of producers q-tip um yeah yeah i i i really like this record and black thought is like he's one of those under the radar mcs that has because the roots like selling point and why people know them is because oh wow they're a live band who does hip hop music. So that is kind of the headline. But he, for most of that band's career, he has been the only MC. Mm-hmm. So I don't think pe- it, like he gets hidden behind the fact that like, whoa, cool, a nine person band making hip hop music. It's like, yeah, but he's the one carrying all, <laughs> carrying yeah. all the songs. He yeah. does all the rapping on pretty much all their stuff. They had a second uh, MC for a little bit, but he's been their guy solo for 20 years yeah and he's i mean he's he's great dude there I, I you know not that i watch much of the tonight show anymore but you know there was a time when we were consistently watching the tonight yeah. show and I mean, so God, talented nothing, man so incredibly yeah. talented dude yeah. when they when they would have like like jimmy fallon would be like oh you know so and so like where are you from and what do you do and it's like oh her name is you know her name is terry he she's a, a nurse from thing. ontario yeah. you know what i mean like he'd be like yeah. doing stuff like that and you're like god damn like this guy is just like going off yeah. <laughs> like you know yeah. but yeah true t- completely yeah and because uh, it's a 50 50 year old man who has therefore like been in hip-hop culture his entire life because yeah. that's the length of hip-hop um is right about when this man was born from philadelphia went to an arts high school where he met the other members of the roots um the way he constructs rhymes and the way he raps like he is a rapper who like pull out the genius app on your phone and play this record and just read along so you can really absorb because he it's not dense in the way that like mf doom stuff can be like Mm -hmm. overly like the references are so obscure but he is a wordsmith. He is like yeah. a guy who really puts together a flow and story and analogies and similes and metaphors. And he brings things back and the themes that run throughout a song and then come back. And yeah. Yeah. And just delivery, like a very confident MC who is like, yeah, I don't just um and yeah, my way through my songs. Yeah. Like he, it's, it's like crazy yeah. it's crazy yeah he's really good uh yeah. uh song highlights do you are there any tracks in particular yes. that you like really enjoyed i mean um, I, yeah go for yours if you want yeah i liked um so the darkest part that's cool because obviously you know raekwon the chef is on that oh, sure, yeah. shout out to yeah. uh wu-tang to all my wu-tang heads out there yeah representing staten island you know like yeah. i pff, that was yep. a great that was a great one that's the kiki d sample too uh aquamarine with michael kiwanuka was oh, like, like really that really cool yeah. too that was dope and yeah. that is that is that's michael kiwanuka right that's right, like right. from the new york giants like he was the dude. no oh no. it's not no, <laughs> no. I thought, I thought no he is a british soul <laughs> I was like, oh, this is the guy from the yeah, New York Jason Giants. Jason Pierre-Paul is on this track. 
wait, Plaxico Burris <laughs> featured on the on the last song? Get the fuck out of here. No, all right. So I apologize, but that's Is that cool Jeremy song. Shockey that's doing ad libs? Cool. <laughs> He's dabbing in the back. Oh my god. Um yeah, and Strangers with ASAP Rocky and Run the Jewels. That was a cool track. That, and too. that was the single. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah it was a good track. Yeah, songs I really enjoy were uh, Gold Te- No Gold Teeth, which I think was the song that the instrumental has that, like, boing, boing, like yeah, that weird the, spring sound. The guitar bend. Um, I like the song Belize, which features um, the departed MF Doom. Yeah, rest and, in peace. Uh, I like that song because, like, the atmosphere of it has, like, a kind of like a French horn sample mm-hmm. or I believe it's French word. Um, and I really like the closer. And um, as far as like the content of the song, that's the one that really start to finish was like, oh, I, you don't have to listen to the song twice to like really get the full picture of this is a successful black man from nothing talking about like how that's not, a, that's still not an easy path to walk yeah. is like, because you leave some people behind and you want to, you know, help people, but you also want to enjoy your success. And, um, and it's called violas and lupitas. Yes. Um, and an- again, another one where it's like an awesome organ sample and it's like, just sounds so rich and smooth and, um, kind of like it's, it's a decadent, decadent type of music to match the lyrical content. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, and and if you don't know the Danger Mouse music, like go listen to this, listen to cheat codes, enjoy it. Go back and listen to some other stuff, which is like the Mouse and the Mask, which was a project he did in like maybe two thousand five with M- MF Doom. Um, listen to the Gray album. If, I think that's streaming. I think all the legal stuff got cleared up at some point. Oh okay. But the Gray Check album is worth checking out. the The two Gnarls Barkley projects yeah. are really worth checking out. Um, if you want more of what the musical style is. And um, if I'm going to suggest another, any other Roots projects, um, I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Undone was one I really enjoyed. That's from like 2011. Okay. Um, that's the last, the one in the past like 15 years I enjoyed a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not well versed in the Roots. I. I Embarrassingly, it, I apologize, <sighs> but I'm not. Um, I don't know much. There's another. There's. I got to root a, around in that discography. That's right. <laughs> There's another. Let me let me look it up real quick. Give me like two seconds. Yeah. Because there's another one, a couple other ones. If you want to really like hear more of what Black Thought does at his best, Things Fall Apart from 1999, um, and The Tipping Point from 2004. Those are other okay. ones that I I personally really enjoy. Right on. Yeah. So rating then, if we're gonna give it a rating, so, uh, Pitchfork gave this a seven point two. Yeah. So and I read the review, the Pitchfork review. It was it was all right. It was all right. It was there. It, there were there were mm. some sort of, uh, yeah, no, not negative things said, but things where it's like they were comparing it to maybe some other projects and stuff that were they were like, yeah. oh, it sounds kind of like this or it sounds kind of like that. You know, I mean, me, like I said before, I'll mm. say it again. I'm always kind of I with stuff like this. Like this isn't something that I probably probably wouldn't have picked this up. Yeah, really knowing what to sure. expect or what to listen to. I have not re- a lot of reference points. I think that's kind of benefited me on mm. several um, instances, <laughs> several yeah, occasions yeah. with this kind of thing. But yeah, I would you say being more well versed. What would you say? Um, so I don't listen to a lot of current hip hop music because, like, I feel like an old man now, and there's very few hip hop artists that like really deliver what I want from hip hop music. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is more in line with what I enjoy in hip hop music. I like Run the Jewels. I like Kendrick Lamar. I liked this. Um, I'm saying this is an eight yeah. for me personally. Right on. I'll match you there. I'll say eight. Or uh, I'll give it a see for me that I think this is like an eight five for me. Yeah. Um, I just just because like being someone who you know the majority of like my taste in hip-hop was kind of grown like from my what my cousins were listening to especially like my one cousin uh peter shout out to peter Hmm. in new york uh which it was much more like nas and mob deep heavy like you know the gang stars and like you know stuff like that or be rock him like stuff um this uh yeah it just if it was kind of like a nostalgic listen for me and it was exciting that it was kind of a nostalgic Mm -hmm. listen to me considering it just came out so that was really cool for me like i really really like that and i i hope that you know i mean 
okay, I'm going to draw a comparison here, and I hope you hear with what I'm saying, right? <laughs> but, like, my thing is, is, like, why are bands like Greta Van Fleet big, right? Like, it's because there's, like, current people who are doing current things right. that sound kind right. of like things that were, like, those things of the past, right? So, yeah. you know, I am not saying that this is, like, a Greta Van Fleet record, I don't like Greta Van Fleet. I'm throwing it out there. I don't even care if I hurt feelings. I hate that band. Screw that band. Okay. I'll listen to I'll listen to Led Zeppelin. Anyway. Yes. Uh, anyway. Yes. I know what you mean. But you know what I'm trying to say though. Yeah. It's like, all right, cool. Well, maybe like maybe maybe an album like this will be will serve as an inspiration for me, like for for another for the next up and coming generation of hip hop artists to kind of be like. Hey, maybe we should yeah. go back, you know, cause, cause right now I agree with you, you know, it's kind of like the SoundCloud rappers kind of came and went over the past like seven, eight years, you know, that's kind of subsided a little bit, yeah. you know, things are kind of moving in the direction of like what Drake is doing or, you know, like Beyonce, like it seems like it's kind of going in that like dance hall ish music -y kind of thing. But what I'm hoping is, is that you get an album like this, mm -hmm. that is just kind of like, Hey, don't forget though, like. It, this all used to be like dope samples and like yeah. that's what it was and it was like the dj producer was kind of like the mad scientist piecing right. together all these obscure like moldy oldies and then the mc came over and peppered in over everything and, and stuff that will too, all you know? that will always exist yeah the quote-unquote old school hip-hop will always exist there there's 22 year olds making that type of music yeah but it's not at the forefront of what pop radio and all yeah. that stuff is in america so it's like I don't I don't see this record as like a retread of a sound. It's just it's a revisiting of it, but yeah. also it's more of a continuation because right, you look right. at you look at Black Thought and Danger Mouse production output over the past 20 years, it has not shifted away from this style of music. Mm -hmm. Um cuz they are it's like they're impervious to what the trend like who cares what the trends are? Yeah. Like, could Black Thought get on a song and sing songy, autotune, whatever? And sh I, I'm, I'm sure. But that would be yeah. like taking someone who's doing Goodwill Hunting style math on a chalkboard and being like, all right, what's seven plus 14? And it's yeah, like, right, right, like right, right, right. you know, why do it if that's yeah. that's not where his, you know, where his artistic spirit is and all that? Like, yeah. Yeah. um, but yeah, if for if you enjoy Nas, if you enjoy Mob Deep, if you enjoy Wu Tang Clan, if you enjoy, you know, yeah. um, Gangstar, Pete Rock, CL Smooth, like this is the kind of this is the kind of hip hop. Griselda, who is a current, I think one of the Griselda guys is on one of these songs. Uh, which one is that? Mm, Not Benny know. the Butcher, but uh, the second to last song features a guy from Griselda. I'm, oh, bad, oh, I'm bad at names. Um, oh yeah i know who you're talking about i didn't write it down either yeah like but a, like a... but that's another that's like an independent label yeah. based in buffalo new york that is like we are guys with puff jackets on making hip-hop like it's 1996 still yeah which see, is like cool my, yeah i dig it <laughs> yeah. i'm a sucker for it yeah, I'll, yeah. Buy, I'll buy in yeah. all day with that yeah but anyway so there you have it an eight eight and a half uh, let us know what you think. Drop it in the comments. You know, let us know. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this podcast with your friends. And also, if you've made it this far with us, uh, leave a comment below and 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 uh, wish Luke some get well wishes. I know he'll uh, he'll really appreciate them uh, in his sniffling uh, frenzy. <laughs> you will. But anyway, uh, I think that's about yeah. Yeah, I think we're good. Until next time, guys. We'll see you. This has been. Get in the garage. Peace out. <laughs> this has been a presentation from the Wasted Robot Network. For more information and links to other shows, please visit www.wastedrobotrecords.com/podcasts.